Hello people, it is December 7, 2016, and this is the k Show. My name is Keenan Lafferty, got a good present for you, it is the Christmas special with Wayna. We're gonna be doing some real-time drawings. You're gonna be sticking around for quite a while. So get comfy, check out the reference. Gonna be drawing, not Chloe Kardashian. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ken Lafferty and I would like to welcome you to the Christmas special! Thank you guys so much for joining. And today is a very special one indeed because we're gonna be drawing, like I said, real time. We're gonna be drawing Wayna, the Christmas elf, from the previous years. And we are going to be bringing her up to date. We're gonna be drawing her as a snowboarder. Gonna be playing around with some cool ideas that I had today. Uh, these are just our references, our reference images that we'll be using throughout the day. And we're gonna be having a lot of fun with that. But before we get into today's show, we need to take a stroll down a very special place, and that is, of course, the lovely lane. So journey with me to tinyurl slash kncalefanner. Click on this cryptic link to see all of the amazing presents that have been left under the tree by you guys out there. And if you have not yet liked the page or submitted your art, then be sure to go do that, and you will be featured on next week's show. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so yes, reiterating what I was saying before, today is going to be all real time because you know what? I was sitting around, I was watching YouTube videos on my tablet yesterday and I was saying, you know what? I like to watch these people, people like Day9, very handsome people, play Hearthstone for hours on end. And you know what? This is actually really entertaining. And I think that I should be doing something like that for you guys. You guys have been asking for more real time stuff because we do a ton of, do a ton of like time lapses and all that stuff. But you know what? Today, we're going to be hanging out for a while. We're going to be hanging out for a while. So I want you guys to get comfortable. And I'm going to be drawing an entire thing from scratch, and you guys get to watch it. And I'm going to do my best to talk over, right? Because I'm going to be doing two of these things at the same time, creating as well as talking, describing what I'm doing to you as I'm going, okay? So uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Wow, I, I can't believe it. I'm drawing before. I'm not stalling that much. Well, now I am, but... I'm not stalling too much, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna come up with a bunch of cute little thumbnails, okay? Because we want to figure out how we want her to look. So the idea that I had was we're gonna have Wayna, you know, the usual thing. And uh, she's gonna be like holding a snowboard or we're gonna see like a snowboard in the back over here, right? So we can see like a little bit of like an insignia or not an insignia, but like a design, something going on here. And then uh, what I really wanted to capitalize on and focus on today was um, drawing sort of like this this awesome phenomenon that happens when you forget to put on sunscreen. And that is, of course, the goggle thing, the goggle suntan uh, line. And I thought that would be a lot of fun to do. So we're going to be focusing on that, okay? So uh, we're just getting into it. And I want you guys to pay attention very closely to, I mean, I'm sure you are, but uh, <laughs> I want you to pay close attention to how I go about doing this, okay? And I want you to see how simple my initial drawings are, as well as something very important that I need to discuss. And that is the portrait setup, the portrait setup. And this is basically um, something that involves like the character and you will see, basically it's like this, look up here. It's the character and it goes down to sort of like the middle of the chest. And why I think these drawings or these, sort of, these sorts of compositions are very easy to uh, experiment with. Uh, because, and the reason is because I feel like a lot of your problems are solved early on and all you really have to worry about is the things that you like. You only have to worry about drawing your character's face. You only have to worry about, you know, figuring out, you know, what clothes they're going to wear or, or lack of clothes rather. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, but the point is, is that it's simple. Okay. It's simple. And I like doing stuff like this, especially when I'm experimenting. Okay. So I'm just kind of playing around, trying to figure out a, oh, I actually really like this one a lot already. Uh, but notice how like simple and like crazy this is. Obviously this is not gonna be the final face that goes to uh, the end of the drawing, but I am liking this a lot, okay? Maybe, oh, the snowboard can be like this. That'll create like a cool sort of thing there. And then she can be holding it right here. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. That looks kind of cool. Oh yeah, and she's gonna have the goggles up here, and then I kind of want. And notice how I'm drawing outside of the of the composition here. Okay, see how I'm doing that? I, I'm doing that just because you know I don't like to. I, I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. Plus, you might have some other really cool ideas that kind of branch out of the the composition, or rather your plane, right? This original kind of crop. 
But don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of just kind of branching out from that, okay? So in fact, I do like to do that sometimes. That way I can kind of figure out, okay, well, I kind of want this arm to maybe be out to the side. How would that actually work? Like maybe it's kind of down here and then it's on her hip. I'll sometimes just draw the character's body down like this, okay? So see that? And then I'll say, okay, well, maybe I like that cropping. Maybe the new crop can be like this. And there you go, you got a whole, whole new composition. Okay, but I'm actually really digging this a lot. However, this needs to be on its own layer. So let's go ahead and copy, delete, reset that. And let's go ahead and flip it because I personally like, okay, a little thing, I'm do my best to describe all the subliminal things that are happening in my head. I always believe that good heroes always go from left to right, right? Especially in America, America, because that's where we, <laughs> that's how we read, right? And that's how we speak. We learn how to speak in America. So let's go ahead and continue with that. Um, so, oh, the other thing. Okay, here we go. So I'm, I think I'm going to move the snowboard a little bit more this way because I want the, the setup to be over here like this. So maybe our new setup will be more like that. Actually, that looks really good. It looks really good. And then she can have like a scarf kind of thing going on here. She still needs to have a little bit of boobage showing because she's the sexy elf, right? A lot of you guys think that, you know, I'm all on that team. I'm on the team of like cover up the ladies. No, not necessarily. I like having the ladies covered sometimes, but then there are other times where they're just supposed to be sexy. And Wayna is one of those girls. She is one of those girls. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, and then of course we can't figure, we can't forget about the ears, ja ears, okay? And then this shoulder needs to come down just a tad bit. And I kind of want to crop this in just even a little more because I want to get as close to that face as possible. Because the less that we have to draw right now, the less you guys have to sit around and watch me do this for the next hour and a half, okay? And that, my friends, looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and duplicate that and let's begin, let's begin sort of setting this up so we can be good to go. Now, at this point, I like to ask myself a couple things and that is, um, now I start going into, okay, expression. Uh, what's the, the general expression that I want to have on her face? Now, she could be looking at us, but another idea that I had, and before you make significant changes to your composition, I always like to hit Control J to duplicate it up. And then uh, we can go ahead and start playing around with a couple different ideas. So this idea that I had was her looking a little bit more towards the sky, like maybe she's looking elsewhere. So her face plane would be more like this. And this might look a little bit cooler. She's looking at the next slope that she's gonna tackle. This will give us a good chance to really show off that tan line that's happening. I think that'll look cool. Then we got the goggles right there. Mm, yeah, I kind of like that. See, here's one thing that I really like, and this is a good example in the Made of Metal piece with Mika and Mocha. They're kind of, you notice in that picture, they're not looking at the camera, they're both looking at something else. And even just having your character look to a different part of the place or different part of your environment can serve as like a tiny bit of story, right? Because you ask, well, what are they looking at? <laughs> you know, it's simple. Maybe you didn't need to explain that, but it works just fine. That works just fine. Now, okay, so this is looking pretty good. I'm actually liking this a lot. Um, I'm gonna actually open the eyes a little bit more because you guys know me, I'm big on the eyes. I feel like 90%, actually it's not even I feel, it is a known fact that 90% of the expression, right? Because it's my show and my rules, my facts, 90% of the expression is in the eyes. Anybody else who thinks otherwise should start their own show and then they can be right too. All right, but that is feeling pretty good to me. Feeling pretty good about that. All right, yeah, I'm liking that. Maybe I actually want her to be looking up even more. Yeah, that's pretty good, I'm liking that. Now, with the magic of Photoshop, we can also say, hey, that head is way too big. We're gonna just messily cut and paste this, Frankenstein this into position. Frankenstein this properly into position. 
And you know what? I actually want to move this up even more because what I want to do, here's another thing, another subliminal thing that's going on in my head is that if she is looking not at us, I feel like she's looking at the environment, right? She's looking at something in the distance. And because of that, we want to move this cropping up a little bit more because we're going for a square composition here, right? And because she's looking up, I wanna have a little bit more of the background showing, whether this is gonna be like mountains or something like that. You know, there's gonna be just like tiny little silhouettes back there. And because she's looking in the distance, we wanna see a little bit more of that. We wanna have a little bit more of that information here. I mean, we can also have like clouds and stuff. Well, also this is, maybe the mountains will be a little bit lower and these will be like clouds over here, yeah. Oh yeah, that'll be really cool. Yeah, because this is like viewing, we're viewing this from like a lower kind of camera angle. So you gotta think that's pushing the horizon and the mountains down lower. It also will make our character look more heroic. It'll make them look awesome. We use this trick a lot in the League of Legends splashes. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that, but it's done, it's used everywhere. If you want your character to look more dynamic, more cool, then all you gotta do is just put the camera a little bit lower. The camera just a little bit lower. Okay, cool, so I'm liking that. So mountains down here, we got clouds up here. Uh, oh, maybe there could be like a tree or something, maybe like a, a little bit of a tree, that would be cool. Kind of a, ooh, with maybe some ornaments hanging. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, she's like standing next to a tree. That could be cool. And then we could also do a little bit of a cast shadow effect. A little bit of maybe like a cast shadow there. I don't know. I think I'm getting too much into the ribbon piece. Thinking too much about ribbon here. But can you blame me? Can you blame me? <laughs> All right, yeah, that's looking very, very nice. Okay. So guys, we have something that is looking good. Oh, that's such a relief because this is literally the hardest part to do. And I did it live, baby, I did it live. So we, we are gonna continue with this. Rain or shine, doesn't matter if I say something stupid, we're gonna finish this to the very end. In fact, you should be hoping that I say something stupid because this is not, we are not going back after this, all right? So this is looking really good. I actually really, really like this. Sometimes I feel like when I'm on the spot, when I'm on the spot, sometimes my inner genius comes out because, I don't know, maybe I, maybe I just learned how to not try so hard, right? After years and years of doing the show, I finally feel like I got it down, I got it down. And you guys would be surprised at how hard it actually is to do that. How hard it is to draw real time in front of people, right? Because time lapses are easy, right? You got the comfort, you got, you got your little private space, you got the comfort and relaxation of your own home. You don't have to worry about anybody watching you. I remember when I was young, I used to hate it. Like, it was so strange. When I was in art art school, or not art school, art AP art class in high school, because I didn't really go to college. I Well, I, I took a 3D, a semester of 3D in college. But I remember back in AP art, uh, I would just be drawing at my desk, right? And as soon as, you know how you can just like feel somebody come up from behind you and they're like looking over your shoulder. As soon as that happened, I could not do anything. I could not do anything. I would just like do this thing. I would just like look at, back at them, just like give them that desk stare. And I'm like, because I was just waiting for it. You're waiting for that comment. You're waiting for them to offer their amazing criticism of like, hmm, do you think that their arm is too small? I think you should make that thing bigger. Oh, also the hands, uh, yeah, there's not a lot of uh, gesture in the hands. Maybe it could be a little bit better. Actually, I didn't get feedback like that. That would actually have been good feedback. Most of the time I got it, it was like, most of the feedback I got was like, what the heck is that? What is that? Or, oh my gosh, you're drawing anime? Oh man, you're such a nerd, you know? <laughs> or my art teacher's like, oh, you don't want to do, be drawing anime. Anyways, and you're not gonna be able to get a job doing anime. That's, unless you move to Japan, what are you gonna do that? And it's like, little did they know. Little did they know, right? Because now we're drawing anime, we're having a good time. We got a show, we got a job, we're doing good. Everything's fine. And uh, yeah, I have you guys to thank for that. So thank you. Thank you for tuning in and watching this. All right, that's enough babbling. That's enough babbling. Let's go ahead and get into the rest of this. So, because I like the way this is looking already. I'm actually very happy with this. Okay, so let's go ahead and... Um, so you'll notice the next thing that I'm doing is... I am refining the anatomy, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control J. We're gonna refine this anatomy just a little bit more, okay? Because I really like the position of this hand and I like the snowboard right here, okay? And I don't wanna cut too much of that off. Also, we gotta get the boobage in there. We gotta make sure we get the proper boobage. So it's very, very simple, right? Because we have the chest plane right here. And then all we have to do is we just add 
the boobs right onto there. So it's really very simple, see? Boom like that, and boom like that. Easy, easy, easy. See, look at that, mm. cool. Well, that was simple, that was simple, we're good to go. Uh, this one will probably be down just a little bit lower because we have to consider our perspective, right? Perspective, we're looking at these from down below, so they won't be on the perfect, uh, they won't be perfectly horizontal from each other. Gotta give them a little bit of weight. There we go, yeah, that looks great. That looks grand. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and refine the arm really quickly. Even though we won't be drawing too much. Actually, wait. Now, well, she'll be mostly covered. She's probably going to be wearing like some sort of thicker coat. But rest assured, it will be open in the most important parts. Okay. <laughs> now, let's just go ahead and draw this hand on there. This is going to be out of the frame, so we don't need to worry so much about that one. But this one we do. Cool. All right. Now, with that... With our proper anatomy in place, let's go ahead and duplicate this. And let's go ahead and see if we can find a proper frame. Hmm, do we like this? I kind of want to push in. Like I said, I want to push in as close as possible. As close as possible. Maybe we can even warp it a little bit more like this. See, here's another cool thing that you can do. So the way that I'm doing this, see how I'm like pulling it and like almost like changing the camera angle? It's kind of fudging it a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal. The way you do this is you uh, are obviously transforming. You transform your picture, right, to the point that you want. Then uh, on these little side things, these little side uh, grabby things, I forget what they're called, but you hold Shift, Control, and Alt all at the same time, and you click that. And what it does is it allows you to kind of pull the perspective a little bit more, ever so slightly. And I think that one looks really good. Let's see, I think that one looks very nice. I want them to be down a little bit more. I think that looks good. So the way that I'm doing this, guys, uh, just a quick tutorial for you, the quick thing that I'm doing is I'm thinking about rules of thirds, okay? Now I really like important things to be on these rules of thirds, right? Notice how I don't want the face, like before when I was moving the face down here, it feels a little weird because it's now right in the center of the piece, right? Notice my character is also off to the side because rule of thirds also applies like this. Of course, right? I'm sure you guys, this is very rudimentary, but see how once we place the area of focus in this area, uh, it, it's on those two thirds lines, it automatically becomes much more pleasing to us. Automatically becomes much more pleasing. So that's just a quick thing, quick idea for you guys. If you're struggling with your composition, consider rule of thirds. There's lots of other rules and techniques and ideas that people have, but that's the most often, most often that's the one that's always in my mind subliminally. I'm just kind of moving that around, okay? So now that we got that done, it's time to go ahead and darken this a little bit because we're awesome. We made our lines properly. Made our lines properly on one layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and darken this. Actually, that might be too dark for now. Now, because we are doing a little bit of a speed painting today, we are going to, I'm actually gonna pull up this Wena, and I'm gonna use this as reference and move that to the other screen because I want to actually create a uh, sort of like a winter jacket looking thing. Um, sort of based off of this. I'm probably just gonna give her like a scarf like that and a simple winter jacket. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna be using this just as reference on the other screen. So let's go ahead and move that over there. Describing everything in detail. And let's go ahead and control J this now that we got our happy little, happy little composition going. And let's go ahead and begin refining refining. So refining, all I do here is um, I want to start getting rid of a lot of my guides and really starting to figure out exactly what the character is going to look like as far as um, like the body, right? The body's already pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with the arm. The arm's looking good and we're going to be overlaying a jacket on top of it anyways. Um, but let's go to the face. The face is the most important part. The face is the place. So let's go ahead and get into that. Okay, so for my noses, I always like to do like this, I always start them like this, right? I do like this little V, and this represents like the nostril as well as like the top of the nose, right? But I just compress it, or rather I just simplify it to this. And I do that all the time. Works really well on my anime characters. But the cool thing that I like about it is because it's sort of rooted in that 
realistic. It starts from a realistic point of view and then it's simplified. It actually works really well when you're doing more realistic portraits as well. So I like the versatility of it. I like the versatility of it a lot, okay? So let's go ahead and make sure that we get Wayna's eyes proper. In fact, while I'm doing this, I'm totally going to, because I have in reference on the other side and you guys don't see what I'm looking at. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this right here. So that way you guys can see Wayna's actual face and you can watch how I try to align and sort of create those same proportions, okay? So, uh, but Wayna's pretty simple. She's pretty dang simple because she's just got like this lower lid here and, um, and yeah, she's, I mean, it's a very simple anime character. She's just got, kind of got that style. A couple little things that I have put into my own style that I really like. Uh, but a couple things that we need to watch out for. And one is that uh, we want to make sure that the eye isn't going all the way to the edge of the face. I like to have a little bit of breathing room right here and here, right, between the cheek and the eye, right? Uh, let's see. I always like to draw the teeth. And I also like to draw like this little black part, right? So that we actually show like the depth of the mouth right there. And this is looking pretty fancy already. I'm liking this. Um, I don't know if I like the, to the toothy smile. I think I might wanna more have like an open smile, right? And that's very simple to do, right? We can just do this, do that, and show the tongue. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Her mouth might be a little bit big. Let's go and make it a little bit more dainty. Ah, yeah, there we go. That looks good. But notice how I'm doing all of this with values, guys. Do you see how I'm not drawing lines? Do you see how I'm not like pressing firmly on all these things yet? You know, you can do that at certain points. In fact, I actually like that hard line on the nose there. That looked cool. But uh, for the most part, I'm still just trying to get an idea. Like I'm trying to capture emotion. I'm trying to capture character. And I find that that's a lot easier to do when you're not thinking in terms of lines, but rather you're thinking in terms of value. Thinking in terms of value and you're sculpting. Hence, line sculpting. The thing that I always have taught you guys about. I've always taught you guys line sculpting. Okay, so I'm digging this, I'm digging this. We're getting close, we're getting close. Okay, you guys know me, I am a huge fan of the face and eyes and hands. Face, eyes, and hands is one of the biggest things that I always try to get right with my characters. Uh, just because I feel like that's really where you get to connect. That's where you really, that's the first place that your viewer looks. It's the focal point. And so you should always make sure to take extra care to make a relatable looking face or a very relatable, not necessarily like a relatable face, but a relatable expression. And, and that's what I think a lot of people get confused with is they're always trying to create something that looks like, you know, like they're spending a lot of time on the details of the face, right? They'll make like a realistic looking face, but the underlying foundation of it, the underlying um, expression is a little off. It's, it's a little off and that will disconnect your viewer. It will disconnect your viewer a tad bit. So, be careful with that, okay? All right, this is looking pretty okay. Let's go ahead and flip it. Let's take a look here. Let me see. Um, I'm liking this, but there's something off about the face. And I think that it is the fact that this eye is too far this way. It's too far to the left. We need to give Wayne a little bit more breathing space as far as her eyeballs go. Maybe we'll actually move this one back too. I feel like I've moved both of these back. This will look a little bit better. Oh yeah, that looks great. Immediately, <laughs> immediate improvement. There we go, yeah. There we go, love it. Love it. Um, I feel like I want this mouth to maybe come down a little bit more. Whoops. Uh, it's all right. It's all right. I'm still not fully satisfied with this mouth. We're probably going to have to come back to that in just a moment. But for the meantime, we can at least put in the blush, right? Put that in. Wait, hang on. 
Put in the blush. Let's go ahead and, I. oh, I see what's wrong. This eyelid needs to come up more because we're looking at this from underneath. So you gotta think more of this cheek, more of this cheek area is kind of pushing up or it's rather like distorting and kind of covering a little bit more of that eye. So it's gonna look a little bit more like that. Cool. All right, continuing. Let's see, we got the eyebrow. And then those goggles are gonna be following closely afterwards, so we don't need to worry too much about, we'll probably have a little bit of hair. Oh yeah, she's got this hair that comes down. All right, I want it to be a little messy because I want it to look like it's kind of being pushed into her face from the goggles, from the goggles. There we go. Yeah, it's looking good. Very good, very, very good. Uh, and let's go ahead and uh, examine our reference. Let us examine our reference, specifically this guy, because I really like the way he looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab him, I'm gonna isolate him. And this is a good example of, you don't always have to have an exact reference of what you're trying to draw, rather, um, just the general idea. and really translating things guys translating your your references is what will bring you from an okay artist to a very very good artist because oftentimes you're not going to be able to find the exact angle or the exact lighting or the exact whatever you're looking for on google as much as we wish we could it just doesn't work that way so you need to be able to say okay well look at these goggles what is the actual construction of them well uh, it looks like they come down right to the edge of the eyebrow, so that's something that we can do. Let's start by doing that. Let's bring the goggles to the edge of the eyebrow. And then we've got like these little uh, kind of foam pads that go through here, so let's kind of construct that. So you're constructing with information as opposed to drawing what you see, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with drawing what you, with what... <laughs> there's no problem with drawing what you see. <laughs> Um, because, you know, that's just experience, right? But eventually, just, just so I can give you guys a little bit of a heads up, that's something that you should always be striving to do um, is constructing with information. Constructing with information and translating what you see as opposed to just drawing what you see, okay? So see that? Look, this is a good example. See how I kind of like refined this? I kind of squished this area of the this specifically right here see how I squished that and then this one is like nice and open that's me translating what is here right it's me translating what is on this guy's head as opposed to drawing what's there okay so continuing this is looking great by the way guys I'm super happy I'm super happy that I can do something live for you guys and I hope you're enjoying it so far this has been a great Christmas episode thus far and we are having a ton of fun. I'm actually thinking about splitting this into two parts because, um, yeah, I would hate to get all the way through this. And then, actually, I'm not even gonna say it. Not even gonna say it. <laughs> not gonna jinx myself. Um, but yeah, this will probably be divided into two parts. So that way you guys can digest it in a couple different, couple smaller bites, right? A couple smaller bites. Okay, cool, so that looks great. That looks great. And then right back here, this will be where the goggles connect to the back of the beanie. And then, um, yeah, we should have this coming down right here as well. Oh wait, we need to make sure it doesn't go too far back because this part needs to poke out and then her ears need to come out of this. Her ears need to come out of this. In fact, maybe her ears should be pushed down a little bit more. That would be cute, yeah? It's always cute when the elf girls have their ears pushed down. There we go. Yeah, she's more like a lop ear elf. Yeah, that's great. That's just grand. Okay, simple stuff. Here we go. Let's get some hair in the face. One of my favorite things about going snowboarding is just like, or just pictures of snowboarders and when I go snowboarding, I just like how crazy your hair gets like inside of the beanie and like the goggles, just like pushing it around everywhere. And it gets a little crazy. So I want to kind of 
really capture that feeling, right? Capture the, the sort of craziness that happens with your hair when you're snowboarding. Now this neck, as much as I enjoy this neck, it is a little bit too far out. It's a little too far out, man. We need to bring it back. Okay, that is looking great, guys. Wow. Okay, let's duplicate that and let's take a step back. How are we feeling? Hmm, pretty good. Although I feel like the head is getting a little bit large once again. So let's go ahead and use our magical wand, our magical Photoshop wand, and shrink it down a little bit. Shrink it down, put it right about there. That looks great. That looks grand. Okay. Um, I actually want to push this out a little bit more too, maybe a little bit more like that. I'm gonna push these back a little bit too, because this is the edge of the eye. So I want to make sure that it's reading as such. And I feel like this eye on the right is looking a little bit more upwards than this one here. There we go. You know how every now and then you're just working on a piece and then you just do something and you're like, yes! That's how I feel right now. That's how I feel right now with this face because it looks so good! Yes! Dude, oh, oh by the way, that's what I do when I'm... You're gonna see a lot of interesting behaviors that you normally would not see because this is what I do when I'm drawing by myself. <laughs> I do all kinds of weird things, right? And I think a lot of people should be doing it, right? You should be pumping yourself up while you draw. You should be proud of yourself. You make a cool looking face, good job. Have a happy accident, celebrate it, right? Well, not for too long though. Not for too long, because you gotta, you know. Don't be celebrating every five seconds, or maybe you should, you know what? Who am I to say? Do what works for you. Do what works for you. But just so you guys know, I am constantly saying stuff to myself, constantly talking to myself. And uh, to be honest, I think that's one of my well-kept secrets. It's one of my well-kept secrets of how I keep myself in a good mood because your best stuff comes out, I say this time and time again, your best stuff comes out when you're not trying. Your best stuff comes out when you're comfortable, when you're not worried, when you are okay, or, or not, not necessarily you feel like everything's going right, but rather you're okay with things not going right. You're okay with making mistakes. You're okay with learning, okay? So uh, that should be a good lesson to you guys. Good lesson to you guys. And hopefully you pick that up from watching this. And you guys can see, even in, this, even in this episode, it's like there's things that I'm not doing perfect. And I want you guys to see all of those mistakes. I want you guys to see everything. Because I think too often, too often us artists, and I don't blame, I don't, I don't blame other artists, but it's hard to show that. It's hard to show you in your most vulnerable state your most vulnerable state when you're actually creating something. It's easy to time lapse, it's easy to do a little tutorial here and there, right? Teach people how to draw a hand. But actually doing this and describing it, I think it, it can be pretty tough. I think it can be pretty dang tough. Here I am freaking tooting my own horn. <laughs> what I'm saying is that more people should be doing this. I wanna see more artists doing this type of stuff. All right, cool. That face looks freaking awesome. That looks like the Wayna that we know and love. And now we're ready. Okay guys, so the good news is, is once you get the face out of the way, you're ready to move on to the next part, right? And that is of course, putting some clothes on. But in case you're doing a really sexy picture, then you already got the body laid out and that's done too. But in this case, we are gonna be covering up a little bit. And for that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be doing part two. So thank you guys so much for joining for part one of the Christmas special, Wayne of the Snowboarder. I'll see you guys on part two. In fact, you can click right here to head on over to part two. I'll see you guys there. And until then, you guys stay awesome. See you soon. Oh wait, actually I want there we go. I want Christmas music for the end. There we go. Perfect.